You have been transported into the patient's brain. To cure this patient, you need to find the source of his infection and eliminate it. Remember that he has been complaining of fever and a productive cough that has lasted for more than a month. Fantastic! You have cured the patient of pulmonary tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, TB, is a highly infectious illness caused by the bacterium Mycobacteria tuberculosis. The infection is passed from person to person through airborne droplets resulting from coughing or sneezing. Most typically, the lungs are affected, although TB can infect nearly any organ. In the vast majority of cases, the immune system is able to control the infection. Oftentimes, however, control is achieved through the formation of small, walled-off nodules called granulomas. Inside the granulomas, there are still bacteria in a dormant state, which can reactivate at a later stage in life. The patient in this case had a large right upper lobe cavity caused by reactivation of bacteria within a granuloma. The incidence of TB in the U.S. has been dropping for many years, but it has begun to rise again in recent years. This is attributed to the AIDS epidemic, which has created a large number of people with weakened immune systems who become infected and then serve to spread the disease. More worrisome still, new TB strains are emerging that are resistant to all known forms of antibiotic therapy. You have been transported into the patient's stomach. To cure this patient, you need to find all 20 of the viruses and zap them. Remember that he has been suffering from fever, cough, and shortness of breath for several days. Amazing job! You have cured the patient of influenza pneumonia. The flu virus typically causes a relatively mild upper respiratory illness that lasts anywhere from three to seven days. Rarely, however, the influenza virus can infect the lungs themselves, causing a very severe form of pneumonia that can be fatal even in young, healthy adults. Although there is no specific therapy for this viral illness, it is difficult to distinguish influenza virus pneumonia from the more commonly seen bacterial pneumonias. This patient would thus have been treated with antibiotics, as if he had a bacterial pneumonia such as pneumococcal pneumonia. A failure to respond to antibiotics as expected is often the clue that signals doctors to look for an unusual cause, as in this case. It's time to see another patient.
you have been transported into the patient's heart. To cure this patient, you need to find all of the cholesterol plaques in his arteries and eliminate them. Remember that he has been suffering from chest pain brought on by even mild exercise. You are the best doctor around. The patient's angina is gone since you cleared the cholesterol plaques from his arteries. Angina pectoris occurs when the oxygen supply to the heart muscle is inadequate to meet the heart's demands. The heart is deprived of oxygen and the patient experiences pain. Most commonly, angina occurs with mild stress or exercise. Angina is caused by narrowing of the coronary arteries usually due to a buildup of cholesterol plaques. The pain can be relieved with medication, but definitive treatment requires intervention to restore normal blood flow to the heart muscle. Coronary balloon angioplasty and coronary artery bypass grafting, CABG, are the most common methods of definitive treatment. Congratulations! You are now inside the patient's right lung. To cure this patient, you need to find all ten of the bacteria and zap them. Remember that he has had fever and abdominal pain for more than a week. Great work! You have cured the patient of typhoid fever. Typhoid fever is caused by eating either food or water contaminated by the bacterium Salmonella typhus. The infection is spread from person to person through feces, usually by contamination of water supplies with sewage. Infection can also be spread through the handling of food by typhoid carriers. The bacteria pass initially from the intestine into the blood and then to the liver and spleen where they multiply. Next, they are secreted by the liver and concentrated by the gallbladder. At this point, the bacteria are released once again into the intestine, but now in enormous quantities. The most worrisome complications are significant intestinal bleeding and or intestinal perforation. Diagnosis is confirmed by culturing the bacteria from the blood, feces, or urine of an infected patient. Treatment is dependent on antibiotic therapy. It is not uncommon to recover from the illness without serious incident, but to remain a carrier for many years with the organism sheltered within the gallbladder.
you have been transported into the patient's left lung. To cure this patient, you need to find her tumor and eliminate it. Remember that she is a long-time smoker. Well done! You have cured the patient of lung cancer by removing it before it could spread. Typically, lung cancer isn't diagnosed until symptoms appear, such as a worsening cough or chest pain. By this time, the cancer has usually spread and the prognosis is poor. Sometimes, however, lung cancer is detected on a routine chest x-ray, performed for some other reason, as in this case. When detected early, lung cancer can often be removed surgically, with a good chance for complete cure. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths in both men and women in the U.S., and cigarette smoking is the main cause of lung cancer. The incidence of lung cancer is strongly related to the amount of smoke a person is exposed to. Quitting the smoking habit is the best thing a person can do to minimize their risk of developing lung cancer.